Welcome back to Carnades.org. Today we're going to be continuing with our series, Six Months of Set Theory and Higher Order Logic. This is Logic 301, P month number three, Piano Arithmetic. Now, we're going to be looking at today, what is Zermelo successorship? So, starting with the null set as zero, it might make sense to start counting up in the same way that we did initially to show that there are infinitely many sets by taking one to be the set of the null set, two to be the set of the set of the null set, and so on. This seems simple and intuitive, where the additional brackets are basically serving as the successor relationship themselves. You count the number of brackets, and that's the number that you have. This basic framework was Zermelo's initial schema for defining successorship. It is not the schema that we're going to use, but it maybe is a schema you may encounter out there, so wanted to share it here. Under this framework, we would have the following. The null set is equal to 0. The set of the null set is equal to the successor of 0, also known as 1. The set of the set of the null set is the successor of the successor of 0, which is the successor of 1, which is 2. The set of the set of the set of the null set is the successor of the successor of the successor of 0, or the successor of 2, which is 3. And the set of the set of the set of the set of the null set is the successor of the successor of the successor of the successor of 0, which is the successor of 3, which is 4. Whew, this reminds me of a video we did at the end of one of the last months of set theory where I had to say the set of the set of the set of the set of the null set over and over and over again. Whew. This process is fairly simple, and it's clear both how you would get from one number to the next, you just add a pair of brackets, and how you could define any given number. Simply, that many brackets around the null set. Count the number of brackets, you know what number you have, and you want to get a certain number, put that many brackets around the null set. Fairly easy. The function would be defined as an infinite class of ordered pairs that would look something like this. Successorship would equal the class of the ordered pair, the null set, and the set of the null set. Because remember, when we're putting something into the successorship function, we look at the domain and output the range. Then the next one would be the set of the null set and the set of the set of the null set, etc., etc. Essentially, you put in 0, you get 1, you put in 1, you get 2, and so on. Where each pair is the input, the first number, and its successor, the set of that number. We can also explicitly this, define this function as follows for all x. The successor of x is defined as the set of x. Note that we will not be using this definition. This is just an explainer on what Zermelo's successorship is. This is not the definition you will find in the proofs that we're going to do on piano arithmetic, though it is a definition you may encounter in the literature out there. Up next, we're going to be looking at the definition that we will be using. What is von Neumann successorship? Watch this video and more here at Carnades.org, and stay skeptical, everybody.